Today on the patio, we're doing something I've actually never tried before. I've got them right here. We're doing some big old beef ribs. We're gonna do them with some coffee wood smoke on the Komodo Komodo. Let's get some smoke rolling. What's up, barbecue fans? My name is Jake, and today we're doing something special, something I haven't done before. Let me talk to you about what we're using for our fuel source and our smoke. So first off, we're gonna use some coffee lump. What's coffee lump? This is lump made out of coffee wood. You can get this from Komodo Komodo. This is an old box of it. Um, I've got tons of it, but I'll leave a link down below. They sell this and on beef, this is a delicious fit flavor all by itself. But we're gonna do a couple more things. We're also gonna use some coffee wood for our smoke flavor, all right? So I've got some pieces here whole box full of chunks. I think that's gonna add a nice flavor to it, but I think I wanna kick it up one notch. We're gonna get some Bear Mountain cherry in there as well, and I'm gonna add maybe a block of this, maybe two, we'll see. I think cherry wood's gonna add a nice sweetness to it, but it's also gonna add a beautiful color to our beef ribs. So let me show you how we're gonna set this up. We'll bring in, we'll go through starting up the Komodo Komodo and we'll get our fire rolling. So let's have a look inside our Komodo Komodo. I've just got the top rack in, recently did a brisket video, and as you can see, it's a little dirty. You can tell that I did not use drip pan, <laughs> but that'll be okay. What we're gonna do here is we're going to clean up some ash, and we're gonna use a half basket today. This can be a pre pretty quick cook. I'm thinking four hours, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some coffee wood down here. These are pretty small pieces, so I'm gonna throw a handful down here. All right, and then I'm gonna throw one big old piece of cherry in the middle there. All right, I might put another one on top. I'll bring it around the other side so you can see just a little bit easier. And now you can see what we got on. So we're putting everything on the bottom there. Uh, let's get out our coffee wood, our coffee lump. By the looks of it, I may have enough just in this bag alone. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna put a little bit more in because there's some small pieces I'm at the end of a box. Put a couple more bigger pieces in. Now I'm sure that the box for this stuff is very, very different. I've had this stuff for a long time. I ordered a ton of it, like hundreds of pounds. <laughs> so I don't know what the boxes look now, but they have it on their website. Get one more big old piece over here. Here we go. Get this guy fired up here. Now this stuff lights pretty easily, so you don't need to overdo it, especially if you've got a grow gun going. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw a little piece of that there, this piece of that there. And as this comes up to temperature, we'll get that to clear up a little bit. Put our top rack in here and we'll put our rack. So just to give you an idea, this is gonna be our cold zone. This is where our beef ribs are gonna go. We've got our basket splitter in there and this is our hot zone. So I'm gonna smoke over here and then probably near the end, I'm gonna leave the membrane on because I want them to hold together. If I'm not happy with the bottom of them, I might just put them over here for 15 minutes just to crisp up that membrane. But let's let this guy get up the temperature. And just to show you how I'm gonna bring this up the temperature right now, we're closed. So I'm gonna open this up about a turn and a half. And the bottom here, it really depends how much of a rush you're in, right? Uh, with the grow blades or grow gun, it gets going pretty quick. So a lot of times I just use this single hole here. You've got this whole area here that'll let air in. Or if you're really in a hurry, you could open this up. Uh, but if you do this, remember, you're gonna suck a lot of air through there very quickly. So it's gonna come up to temperature quick. So don't overshoot your temperature. So a lot of times I'm not in a rush today. I'm gonna leave it there and that'll be my cooking hole as well. And then I'll just adjust the temperatures with the top damper. But we'll let this go for 15, 20 minutes and then we'll come out and start to prep our ribs. So while we're waiting for a Komodo Komodo to come up to temperature, let's prep our ribs. So these guys are from Meat and Bone. They are a friend of the channel. I have a discount code, I'll link that down below. Save 10% off your first order, but let's look at these guys. These are not a very popular barbecue item. Normally, they are quite thin, right? Normally they're a pretty thin cut. Uh, these ones are actually quite meaty. And you know, we're below the prime rib. So I think they're gonna be kind of tasty, if you ask me. So we're gonna try them out here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Meat Church's new sauce. Here it is here. This is called Blanco. 
Uh, it says steak and everything else seasoning. Well, we got some beef, so I think it's gonna be quite tasty here. One thing I'll tell you is, is at bbq.com, I've got 11% discount code, rumcook 11 so if you wanna stock up on meat church, some Yoder seasonings, uh, Kettleman grills, a whole bunch of them, they got it all. The one thing I'm gonna do here real quick is I'm going to go get a little bit of a binder just to help this stick. Got a little smoky while I went to get my binder, but we're gonna use some W sauce today. If you know anything about me, I don't use binders very often, but W sauce and beef is always a hit and I wanna make sure that our rub sticks there. So we're gonna just do a, we'll start on the top here. We'll do a nice light coating. I'm not even gonna trim these guys. If you've never tried W sauce and you like Worcestershire sauce, W sauce is gonna be your new favorite friend. Every single person I've introduced it to has loved it. And to be honest, one of my viewers turned me on to it a couple years ago and I've been using it ever since. So always read what you guys are doing. And hey, if you're new here, let me tell you something. This channel is Backyard Barbecue. I don't hide my cooks. If I have a problem or a failure, I share it with you guys. There's a lot of perfect barbecue on YouTube and it drives me up the wall and I'm dead set again to that. Uh, one thing I'm seeing here is and bring in our knife, we're gonna use our scissors here, but there's a little good old chunk of fat there that we don't need there. Other than that, under here, I think we're pretty good. So we're gonna start seasoning at the bottom. Nice little coat there. And this is like a salt, I don't know what's in here, salt, pepper, garlic, some onion powder, some, some dehydrated um, onion. It does have a little bit of MSG in it, some butter flavor, and uh, some, some oils and some natural flavors. I've tried it on chicken. It was pretty darn good. I think it's gonna be awesome on beef. And really, I wanna let the beef do the talking here today. So we're not gonna put a heavy seasoning on. Sometimes you'll put something like this on and then you'll put more of a barbecue seasoning on. We're gonna skip that and we're just gonna go 100% Blanco today. We're gonna do a nice little heavy coat. One of the drawbacks of filming outside is that on a cloudy day, the sun comes and goes. So. You can see that a little bit better now, uh, but we've got a nice little heavy coat on that. We're gonna let this sit on there just for a couple of minutes. And uh, we're sitting almost at 225. So we're gonna let this get heat soaked for a little bit longer, uh, but I am gonna back this down for closed to about a quarter turn for now until I see where we're at. Uh, but we're gonna take our time. We wanna let this guy get heat soaked for a little bit. And we're gonna let that smoke finish cleaning up because it's only been 10 minutes or so. Right, so I'm gonna give this probably another 10 or 15 minutes. I'm gonna throw these back in the fridge so they're ice cold when they go on. That'll help get more smoke into your meat. And uh, I'll bring you back when we put them on. So it's been about 15 minutes. We are locked in at 275. That's gonna be our dome temp for this cook. And uh, our seasoning has soaked in nicely. These are looking delicious. I love the smell of W sauce. I got a problem. I mean, I just love it. <laughs> Anyhow, let's get these guys on the Komodo Komodo. And like I said, we're gonna put these guys right over here on our cold side. I mean, the nice thing about having a 32 is look, I got tons of room around here uh, and we're fully indirect. We're gonna let that wood and uh, that smoke. So we're gonna close this up. A little bit of our wood's caught on fire. So we're gonna close this up and just let this go for a couple hours. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna give those ribs a smoke bath for about two hours. And then what I'm gonna do is I wanna make sure these are nice and moist. I have not done them before, as I said, so I'm gonna wrap them in some foil and then we'll bring them up to finishing temperatures. We're really treating these like a set of back uh, pork ribs, just they're beef and we'll see what happens. By then, it'll be time for rum and coke. So I'll see you then. It's been two hours. I've decided we're gonna wrap our ribs in uh, paper for a change. And uh, I don't know, just felt like doing something a little different. So what I am gonna do here, got a little bit of tallow here. Take some right off the top. I'm gonna put a little bit underneath of our ribs here. Not a ton. Sun's help kind of liquefy this a little bit. There we go. All right, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put our ribs right down on that. I'll give you a look at these bad boys. They have twist a little bit. I have not touched these at all. No spraying, no nothing. I mean, they look pretty freaking good. You can see the bottoms of them. We don't have to worry about that membrane there, okay? Uh, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put, maybe I'll put a little bit on here. I can, and I think I just put meat inside of my tallow. So what we'll do is I will take a spoon and spoon that out and throw it out. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this up. You can see I have switched around my Coke. It is officially that time. A little breezy out here. So what we're gonna do here is I'm going to wrap like this. 
And now that I'm doing this, I'm wishing I got a little bit of a bigger piece of paper, but this will wrap up nicely. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to put this meat side down. We're gonna put it back on the other side here, out of the way. And you know what? I don't think the paper's gonna hold unless I put it that way. So we're gonna put them rib side down. I don't know what temperature these guys are at. I know they're gonna take somewhere around three to four, probably four hours. Um, so I didn't even bother bringing out a thermometer. I don't know what they're at, um, but I'm gonna let them go for about an hour and a half and then I'll check them. I'll bring them back or I'll bring you back when we're getting close to pulling them off and I'll show you some of the things I'm looking at. So it's been one hour. These are actually cooking a little quicker than I expected. Let me show you what we're looking at. I just checked these real quick. I thought I was going to push them out another at least half hour and we don't need to do that. I mean, there we are right there. Let me see if I give you a good shove. Obviously the meat has shrunk a fair amount. Temperature wise, we're around 200. Now I recently just put out a video about the different methods that you could use to tell when your ribs are done. We're going to use the exact same method here, right? So we're not worried necessarily about temperature. Temperature is a good guideline, but I'm using this as a probe. We're around 200 degrees, 204 degrees, depending on where we're at. These are actually in really good shape. So the fat rendered out and we've got this part of the bone there. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to put these guys on the Komodo Komodo for a little bit of time. What I want to do is I just want to put some sauce on them. They're quite hot. A little bit on the bottom. There's a ton of tallow in here. I didn't really need that much. Once the, once the uh, fat rendered out, we ended up with a lot of liquid there, far more than I needed. So we're gonna leave this alone like so. And we will put a little sauce on the backside here. Right away, I'm gonna turn this, this over here. I don't want this to cook too much longer. It cooked a lot quicker than I expected, but I just want to get some sauce on it. This is not actually the sauce I wanted to use. I wanted more of a kind of like a steaky barbecue sauce. This is more of a rib barbecue sauce, it's a little sweeter, but I searched the entire house and didn't have really what was on my mind. But I think this is gonna be a-okay. We're gonna let that melt in for a little bit. Probably only about 10 minutes just so we can get the sauce to thin out a little bit with the heat and tack up a little bit, and then we're gonna let them rest. Been 10, 12 minutes, time to pull these guys off. We'll let them rest. Man, they're looking absolutely delicious. Got my long tongs out, we don't wanna lose them. Give you a nice little shot of those guys. I mean, tell me that does not look good. I'm excited. As they shrunk up, they got a good little bit of meat on them. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let these guys rest for about 15 minutes and then we'll give them a try. All right, let's dig in. Give you one more shot of these bad boys before <sighs> flies are out, before we cut into them. Even that lick was good. Let's find our bone. You know, I probably should have flipped this over here, but we'll, I don't wanna flip over because I don't wanna lose all my sauce. But there's a top bone across the top, so I've got to, you got to find, they twist it on me a little bit. There we go. I was going the wrong direction. I mean, holy smokes. Check out, check out the smoke ring on those. Wow. That, my friends, is absolutely friggin' delicious. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like that coffee wood comes through nicely. It's a very unique flavor. The cherry wood with that sweetness is great. And I mean, we basically have prime rib on a stick and it is tender and flavorful. I'm gonna take them inside and tear them up. If you're looking to step up your rib game, check out this video. I give you five secrets to making the perfect style ribs.